couch Dogs need adolescents Hey there Lickin' Riffers, welcome to the Ultimate Bard Chords lesson. In this video we're gonna remove all confusion from Bard Chords. We're gonna learn the simple formula behind the Bard Chords so you can easily find them on the fretboard, memorize the fretboard for Bard Chords. It's different than just memorizing the fretboard, you'll see, it's a lot simpler. And that way you'll know where to put your fingers, where to put the bar and which chord shape to put on. At the end of the lesson I'm also gonna give you an exercise, a very very simple exercise. You can use to get comfortable with bar chords in case you're having trouble putting them on. So, um, we're gonna learn the E and A chord shapes, the bar chord shapes, the basic bar chords, and their derivatives, the E minor shape and the A minor shape. So let's start with the E and A shapes. Now, the formula goes like this. Whenever your bass note is on the E bass string, on the sixth string, your chord would look like E. Whenever your bass note is on the A string, the chord would look like A. Okay, that's the formula. Now, I'm going to elaborate on that and show you what it means, but let's, uh, let's see why it's like that. When you put on the A chord, what you're basically doing is you're playing an open position chord, but it's open because you have the nut holding the strength. If you didn't have the nut and you only had a fret there, you'd have to bar it. So basically what you're doing is barring the zero fret. The nut replaces your barring finger. So the A shape is an A bar, but you don't have to put your finger on because there's a nut. Same thing goes for E. That's why when you move them around, when you move them up the fretboard, you have to bar because the finger replaces the nut. So you just move the chord around, you move it up in pitch. Same goes for A. And same goes for their derivatives, the minor chords, E minor, moving around, and A minor moving around. Okay? Now, I know that this looks like a lot of information, but it really isn't. The secret is to know where the bass note is. If, for example, you want to find G sharp minor, then all you need to know is that the G sharp bass note is on 4, the 4th fret of the E bass string then you immediately know that because the bass note is on the E bass string, the chord would look like E, right? But we wanted G sharp minor, so the chord would look like E minor. That's the whole formula. So let's learn the bass notes. How do you memorize the bass notes? You have a lot of bass notes. The simple way to do this is to start by couplets. For example, let's start with the third fret, okay? I start with uh, the third fret on purpose. You'll understand why when we get to the first fret. You have G on the E string and you have C on the A string. So we'll be talking about E and A all the time. E and A. So on the E and A strings, on the third fret, you have G and C. Okay? G on E, C on A. Okay? You have G and C. So if you play E and A with a bar on 3, you have G and C. You get why? Because we raised E by 3 frets, E, F, F sharp, G, and we raised A by three frets to A, B flat, B, C. Okay, so for now, all you need to know is that on three, you have G and C. Now, the way that notes work is that you have middle notes. Between G and A, you have a middle note. You have G sharp or A flat, but we'll get to that 
later. Right now, all you need to know is that if you want to get from G to A, you need to go from 3 to 5. So on the fifth fret, you have A and D because C, the note that comes after uh, C, is D. And the note that comes after G is A. So on three, you have G and C, and on five, you have A and D. That's not too hard to remember, right? G and C, A and D. And every song you'll play that has G will have C in it. Every song you'll play that has D in it will have A. So the couplets are important because you will play both chords anyway. So uh, if you play one, you'll play the other. I guarantee it. So A and D on five. Okay? You have G and C on three, A and D on five. What do you have on seven? What comes after A? B. What comes after D? E. So you have B and E on seven. That's all you need to know at first. Just memorize these three couplets. B and E, A and D, G and C. And remember, we're talking about E and A here. The E string and the A string. So G and C are E and A up to the third fret. If you play E and A with a bar on three, you get G and C. On five, you'd get A and D. On seven, you'd get B and E. Okay? Now that we've memorized these three couplets, let's look at what's going on behind the third fret. Now, um, the middle notes are called sharps and flats. If you take a note forward up the fretboard, it's called a sharp. G, if you move it from 3 to 4, it's G sharp. But if you take A from 5 to 4, then it's A flat. Okay, a middle note always has two names. So G sharp is also A flat. Okay, G sharp, A flat. And you have middle notes between every note, every two notes, I mean, except for E and F and B and C. Okay, I told you, this formula isn't, um, isn't intuitive, but once you get it, you get it. Okay, it's a lot of information at first, but you'll see, it's a lot simpler than uh, remembering all this information because you only need to understand it once. So be patient. Um, now, uh, if, if so many people got it before you, you will get it. Don't worry, okay? Don't worry if this confuses you right now. By the end of the lesson, you're gonna get it, I promise you. So, a middle note is either a sharp or a flat. And you have middle notes between every note except for E and F and B and C. Now, what does that tell you? Remember what's on the seventh fret? B and E. So, the uh, C and F notes are on eight and not on nine because you have no middle note there. B, C, E, F. But let's leave the eighth fret for now, okay? Just memorize frets three, five, and seven. And let's go back to the first fret. If this is E and we have no E sharp, then one is F. Okay? The first fret on the E bass note is F. But the first fret on the A string isn't B because you do have A sharp. You have A, A sharp, B. So the next couplet is F on one, B on two. Okay? That's something that you need to remember. F is one on E and B is two on A. Okay, so all the couplets, G, C, A, D, B, E, are on the same fret, except for the first and second frets, which are F and B. Okay? 
So we have E and A, F and B on one and two, and then on three we have G and C. On five we have A and D. On seven we have B and E. Okay? Now some of you remember that on eight you have C and F. But we're not gonna touch that for now. So what happens if we want to play F sharp? F sharp is the note above F on the E string. So all you need to know is that F is on one and you know that F sharp is on two because a sharp is up one fret. And if you want to play F sharp, you play a bar on two, E shaped. Why E? Because the F sharp bass note is on E. Remember, if the bass note is on E, the chord will look like E. If we want to find um, the D chord, and we want to play a bar chord, not the D-shaped chord, then we know that the second couplet that we learned is A and D. So D is 5 on A. So you bar the 5th fret, and you put on the A-shaped chord. Because if the note is on A, the chord looks like A. Remember? If we want to find D-sharp, then we take this chord, D, up one fret to D-sharp. And D-sharp is also E-flat. Because it's one fret below the E chord. The E note is 7 on A, remember? So, um, for example, last example before we move on. If we want to find G sharp and C sharp, then all we have to do is play E and A with a bar on 4. Because G and C are on 3. So if we take it up one fret, it's G sharp and C sharp. Okay, you're starting to see the logic behind this? Now, now that you know the, the logic behind the chord shapes, let's go to the minor chords. The minor chords are exactly the same formula with E minor and A minor. If we want to find D flat minor, D is on 5 on A. Take it down one fret to D flat. Bar it. And because it's on the A string, put on the A minor chord. Because you want to find D flat, uh, yeah, D flat minor. Because if the bass note is on E, the chord would look like E minor moving around. And if the bass note is on A, the chord would look like A minor moving around. Okay? So your basic chord shapes, the barred chord shapes, would look like E or E minor, or A or A minor, whether the bass note is on E or A. And that's the whole formula. So let's practice this for a second. If we want to find G minor, we already know that G is the E chord up on 3. All we have to do is to turn this E chord to E minor. And that's it. This is G minor. And if we take it up one fret, it's G sharp minor. If we take it down one fret, it's G flat minor. Or F sharp minor. And that's the fastest way to find barred chords instead of having to calculate notes. For example, you want to find D sharp, so you won't go A, A sharp, B, C, C sharp, D, D sharp. What happens if you forget that there's no middle note between B and C? You get confused, you play uh, a B sharp note and there's no such thing. So the calculation method when you don't remember the formula can get you into a bit of trouble. Um, 
it's a lot better to remember the couplets because in every note you have, uh, in every song you have G sharp in, you'd have C sharp in. In every song you have E in, you'd have B. In every song you have F sharp minor, you'd have B minor. Okay? In some songs, you'd have a mix. You'd have F sharp and B minor, or B and F sharp minor, but you get what I'm trying to say. You get the couplet all the time because those are building stones of harmony, um, of scale harmonies, but let's not get into that. Let's keep focused on the barred chords, okay? So again, G and C on three, a and D on 5, 7 is B and E. And on 1 and 2 we have F and B. So if we want to find B flat minor, we'd have two options. Because if this is B, we have B flat on 1 on the A string, so we can put on the A minor shape. Or we can find B on 7 on the E bass string and go down one fret to 6 and play an E minor shape. And it's exactly the same, it's exactly the same chord with an extra note. Okay? So um, the logic behind where you play the chords is by necessity. For example, if you want to play uh, C sharp minor, G sharp minor, A, then logic would dictate that you do this. Because the closest A chord is here. You can also do this. But then you'd have to let go of the G sharp minor chord a little earlier to go to A. Instead of leaving the bar on, just moving it up one fret and adding a finger. So um, you can practice it like this. You can practice it by couplets and just play major chords first. G, C, A, D, B, E. And if you want, add the eighth uh, fret for C and F. And of course, F and B, okay? Or make couplets out of them. F and B flat, F sharp and B, okay? And after you practice the first couplets, practice the middle couplets, G sharp and C sharp, A sharp and D sharp. And then practice the minor chords, F minor, B flat minor, or B minor, G minor, C minor, A minor, D minor, B minor, E minor, okay? Add rhythm to it, pick it, arpeggiate it, do whatever you want with it, make it interesting, find a rhythm and just play them. Doesn't have to make sense. Just be creative with it and challenge yourself to um, making uh, the couplets interesting. So... Okay, just go up, down, up, down, up, down, and jump between couplets. Um, by the way, some people play the A shape like this as a double bar. Um, my mistake, don't do it yet. Get comfortable with the full shape and then make shortcuts. Uh, now for the exercise that I promised you. Um, if you're having trouble putting the chords on, take uh, the D minor chord, for example. Put your first finger on five on the E string, your second finger on six on the second string, and then the pinky on seven on the third, and the third finger on seven on the fourth. So you have, okay, this. Five, six, seven, seven, which is a D minor chord without the bar. Make sure you can hear all the notes, and then take your first finger, and take it off the first string, then put the bar on. Okay? Then check if you can hear all the notes, including the D bass note, 5 on A. If not, if it sounds like this, then put this shape on without the bar. Make sure you can hear it, then put the bar again. Until it doesn't sound like this, but like this. Until you can press all the fingers down. Just 
practice this. Move from without the bar to the bar, without the bar to the bar, until you can get the sound right. Now, the important thing to notice here is if you're moving these fingers when you move this finger around. It sh they shouldn't move. If you move this finger around, then your hand position changes a bit, but the fingers themselves don't move. They don't change like this or go like this. They stay put. That's your goal with this exercise, to keep them where they are. Okay? And then, once you're comfortable with this shape, try it with the A shape, with D, because that's a bit uh, easier. I was going to say easier. The first one is easier. The A shape is probably the most difficult um, chord shape to, to get down when you're a beginner guitar player, because this is a bit uncomfortable, especially if uh, you go up the guitar to the smaller frets. Um, here it's a stretch. Here you have to really bunch them together so there's no way around it. You just have to get used to it. So before you go practice this, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I've got a ton of lessons here already for you to learn and I upload a new one every couple of days and a full uh, guitar arrangement and a tutorial every couple of weeks. So what you've got to lose, uh, subscribe to the channel and become a member of the Lick and Riff community. And in the meantime, you go practice this, go to the website, download the bass chart from the website. I prepared um, a bass chart for you to practice with um, and kind of a cheat sheet. The link is in the description. Go to the website and it's for free. Of course, everything on Lick and Riff is for free and will forever be free. But if you want to give something back anyway, there's a donation button right above the tabs. It's large it's blue, you can't miss it, and everything goes right back into making these lessons for you to enjoy. So, in the meantime, you go practice this, have fun, be patient. If you didn't get the formula, uh, then watch the video again. I promise that it will click, it will register, and you'll get it. It's a very, very simple formula. It's a bit confusing at first, but you only need to understand it once. Okay? After you understand it, you'll never forget it. I'm Saf Levavi. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next lesson. Go have fun. Bye for now.